Back. All right, we're Natural. we're live with the Way Podcast with Luke and Wellington. We I'm glad we're back. Yeah, yeah it's been know, a minute. It's been a minute, and I mean, uh, you know, God has been working, and uh, we're just uh, letting Him lead us to everything that He wants us to do. And yeah, do you want to pray before? Yeah, we start. Let's pray. All right. uh, Father God and Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. God, we just pray for those who are listening. God, that you know exactly what's going on in their lives. Father, you know the hair on their head. God, you say that you know when we lay down and when we rise up, Father. So I just pray that people who feel like they're forgotten or um, overlooked, Lord, they would know that they are known and observed by the God of the universe, Father. So we just pray that we would put our hope in our identity um, and just all of our emphasis of our life would be on our identity in you lord so we just pray that you'd be working in our lives and prepare our hearts and that you'd be with wellington and i god that we could um, share your word with power and with effectiveness um, to help you um, or for you to help us uh, change lives lord so we just thank you for um, what you're doing and just pray you'll bless this episode in jesus name amen amen so we got uh we got john chapter 13, 13. Verse 1 to 17. Yeah, 1 through 17 about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And I know for me, this was a really big scripture um, for my walk with um, anxiety and depression. Of I felt like this was a scripture God brought me to mm-hmm. that really helped me recognize some things I needed to change in order to really get healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, because there was some pride that was holding me back. So, um, yeah, just want to want to read this scripture real quick. So, John 13 Verse 1 says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? And Jesus answered him and said, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. But Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. When Jesus said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, not all of you. For he knew who mm. would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. So pretty big scripture here. Um, and Jesus stating um, the importance of him washing us. And just to start off, you know, Wellington, I don't know, you know what, what you're thinking. But I know for me, one thing that God brought to my attention in this scripture is... You know, washing feet can be a very humbling thing, you know, especially when it's your pastor, when it's your leader, like yeah. Jesus was for the disciples. And I've said the story um, many times, but um, when I was in Kenya, you know, we washed people's feet. Yeah. And that was like a very powerful experience. But in a lot of ways, it was a gross experience of washing people's feet. And um when they don't wear shoes and there it is gross and and there are it is there is hardship um within their feet to actually get down in the grime and clean those things and you know when jesus was doing this to the disciples it would have been very similar you know of a culture where people are you know wearing sandals or no shoes and walking in the dust and the sand and um and i felt like what god showed me in this scripture was that when i was going through anxiety and depression I didn't want to get, I wanted to just do it on my own. You know, I wanted to just pray and fast and read my Bible and have God miraculously heal me because I was seeking him, you know. Mm -hmm. But in reality, there was a lot of pride in that, you know. And I felt like in this scripture, you know, Jesus is getting to the grossest, dirtiest parts of who Peter is. And Peter doesn't want Christ to fix him. He wants to serve Christ. Mm -hmm. In some ways, like serving Christ is a good thing, but we can get even self-centered and prideful, you know, and wanting to serve Christ. When in reality, Jesus isn't first asking us to serve him. First, Jesus is asking to clean us up, Mm -hmm. you know, and he has to clean us up before we can serve him. And in a lot of ways, Jesus was breaking down my pride. And um, I mean, one simple thing was I was so against wanting to take any sort of medication, Mm -hmm. you know, 
for anxiety or depression and I just didn't want to do it and it got to the point where my body was so out of whack even though spiritually God had brought yeah. healing you know there was an element of like well can God work through you know medicine can I yeah. trust that God can work through um, that it's still him doing it but yet he's using practical means for me to humble myself that doesn't always get to be miraculous and awesome but sometimes it is that slow healing process that God brings us to. So for me, I felt like Jesus was saying, you know, for me to go any further in my relationship with him, I needed him to be able to wash my feet mm -hmm. and get to the worst parts of who I was and clean those areas. Yeah. And it was it was a humbling process. Big time. It is. And I love, I don't know, I, I, I had this idea in my mind, you know, talking about this because uh, watching you feel like you said you know uh, imagine just God just going on his knee and taking his robe and yeah start watching you feel you like you God like what are you doing mm -hmm. I have to watch you feel but to God uh, he said it he came here to serve us yeah so he humbled himself for us mm -hmm. and we, we just go down a little bit you know verse 15 and 16 and 17 he said i have given you an example to follow mm. you know do as i have done to you i tell you the truth the slaves are no greater than the master mm. nor nor his messenger more important than the one who sent the message yeah now that you all all these things you know go and do it so I feel like, you know, watching the feed, it was, yeah, it, it, it was a, 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 an example of love. Yeah. Uh, yeah. An example of how God uh, wants us to set, be in the body of Christ. So, so the, the significance in, in my part, I would say that God used this. For him, it was to show his humility yeah. and his servanthood, yep. you know, the way he is. For the disciples... It was it was a lot for their heart and character because before that no i think after that they were they even say like who's the greatest you know yeah, yeah so who's yeah. the best one and for god it's like i just told you like yeah nobody is better than anybody mm -hmm. if you want to be great than the other one you have to serve them and then for us it's like you know we have to show uh, what god did uh, to the disciples for everybody else and i feel like it probably be more comfortable to wash your feet the, to the person that you know Right, right. What about to the homeless out in the street? You know, yeah. To that person that you don't like, or that person that is hard to like, you know, deal with. So I feel like God shows that we had to be able to serve others because that's where He came, and we had to let Him mm -hmm. be the one who washed us. Yeah. To be able to become part mm -hmm. of Him, He said, "If I don't wash you, like, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you, you don't belong to me." Right. And He knew that you that was gonna trade Him, and He still washed His feet. Yeah. So that tells you that even though that God knows the things that you're going to do, he still forgive you, mm. you know? And, mm -hmm. and as I was looking and, you know, doing my research, you know, one of the things they said, like, uh, that was like a one thing, one time thing that he did to the disciples. But washing our feet is like a, like an example of us repenting every single day, mm. you know, mm -hmm. having God to clean us and renewing our mind and yeah. knowing that, okay, like, I think my feet are a little bit dirty. Like I need to go back to God and then yeah. ask Him to forgive me. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And you know, I, I hear all the time with people who, you know, God's working on their heart and they want to get baptized. You know, but then a lot of times they say things like, "Well, I'm not quite ready." Mm -hmm. You know, or I need to clean up my life yeah. first, which is exactly what Peter's doing here. And like you're saying, if we don't allow Christ to help us out of our worst. You know, he's, we're never really going to allow mm -hmm. him to do it. And, you know, the example I always give people is, um, you know, imagine that Jesus is coming over to your house and you're trying to clean your house up so that it would be clean enough for Jesus. So you're, you know, washing the windows, you're washing the bathroom, doing all these things. And every time you clean something, you find something else that's not quite right, you know, and you'd be cleaning forever. And in reality, Jesus is knocking at the door and he's got the Windex and he's got the mop and he's got all the cleaning utensils and he wants to come in and clean your house. You know, and that's the only way it's going to be clean enough for him mm -hmm. is if he's the one who does it. And I just think a lot of times people who are especially new to the faith and wanting to serve Christ, there's this immense pressure to fix yourself. Mm -hmm. And I love, um, you know, the famous hymn, Amazing Grace, mm -hmm. you know, how sweet the sound yeah. who saved a wretch like me, you know, and it's like the whole point of salvation is that 
we are a wretch or yeah. in other words we are sinful we are we have fallen short mm -hmm. short we don't we aren't worthy you know of yeah. christ and if we are trying to be worthy so that we can be saved we can't be saved mm -hmm. that's the that's really the element of, like you said repentance is yeah. admitting confessing there's for i could serve christ for a million years and i still wouldn't earn my salvation no and we need to be able to come to grips to that otherwise performance and guilt performance, yeah. and exactly what peter's saying here no jesus let me do it and that actually kept mm -hmm. peter's desire to serve christ actually kept him from serving christ you know because yeah. our number one desire has to be to glorify god and just to love him and the way we do that is by allowing mm -hmm. him to work on us yeah not by proving ourselves that's to him. true that's true there one of the scriptures, you know, like uh, it's Second Timothy, three, chapter three, uh, verse sixteen to seventeen, mm. and it is said like, you know, I was like, wow, I never like pay attention to the scripture that much, and it said like, all the scriptures is inspired, is inspired by God, and it's useful to teach us what is tr what is the truth and to make us ra realize what is wrong in our lives. Mm. It corrects us when we are wrong and teach us to do what is right. God used it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Yeah. So it's like, wow, like the disciples, they didn't have the word God. They have God, they had God himself. Yes. And yeah. you have God, like you got God right there. Like, you know, like mm. we don't have that. Yeah. But we have the Holy Spirit. Right. They didn't right. have the Holy Spirit. Right. So, the disciples they were really blessed because they walked with God, you know, mm. like and like he said, you know, now you see what I'm doing. Yeah. And you probably don't understand now, but you're gonna understand in the future. And then now you should go and do the same thing. So it's like it's like a generational thing, like the Bible helps us to equip ourselves and disciple. But it's, it's not for us. Mm. It's for us, but then we have to disciple it because right. What important is the Bible and the Word of God if we don't share it with others? Like, yeah, being selfish. Yep. No, exactly. And like you said, that self centered is like, okay, this for me. Like, okay, I'm gonna just keep it and I'm gonna earn myself to heaven. And yeah, my own self, and that's it. Like, yeah, you know. No, definitely. And I think what you're hitting on is big. Of like, you know, there's that first phase of allowing, being humble enough for God to work on us. Yeah. You know, that first phase of we're gonna allow Christ to wash our feet. We're gonna allow Christ to clean us. Um, we're going to surrender to him. And again, this is big, I think, especially in the areas of, and it's interesting because people who struggle with mental illness and addiction usually don't function very well. Mm -hmm. But yet, they're the very people who don't want help. And and again, I've been there. I've been there. And so it's not of judging other people, mm -hmm. but there's just a reality that that happens. And then it's in doing that, then the next step isn't, we don't, we aren't always the project, but we do move into discipling others. You know, we do move into that. And so, you know, when you, even touch on that, you know, discipleship for some mm -hmm. people may be a familiar term for other people. It may be not, no. you know, I've been around ministries that talk about discipleship all the time, but then don't disciple anybody, right. you know? And so I, I think that there is an element, maybe of people listening that they had discipleship defined or, you know, they thought about it, but you know, for you, what's been the impact of discipleship? And like you said, in John 13, Jesus says, I've given you an example, you know? And so not only did Jesus, do this to them but he was expecting them then to re return the favor to the world in the sense of being disciples so you know when you talk about that word discipleship you know the first step we talked about you got to surrender mm -hmm. but once you do that and jesus has washed your feet he's gotten down to those gross parts of your life um you know what does it look like to be a disciple and what's been your experience with um kind of in this season of of being discipled and starting to disciple other people being disciple. You have to let your disciple wash your feet. Yeah, right. You know, like we've been getting into conversation where I feel like, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't want to talk about this, man. Yeah. But it's like, you have to. Yeah. You, know, you have to let your disciple wash your feet. So it, it helped the, the disciple to, like, know, like, okay, like, this is the area you have dirty feet. Yeah. This is the area, like, I have to, like, pray for you. Yes. You know, this is the area, you know, I, I, I know that you're more sensitive. And, and this is the area that you struggle, but you're trying. So to me, it's like now that I, I'm getting to know that it helped me to like do it for others. Mm. Not because of me, but because of God. Because it's like, wow, like if God is doing it for me, he wants me to do it for others. 
You don't yeah. want me to just do it for me and just keep walking, you know? So getting a disciple is really important because it keep you... Um, it holds yourself accountable. Like, yes. even if you struggle, you still like, you know, you are able to open up and, 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 and let that person watch your feet and let that person go into your life and really dig okay, like, this is the problem. This is what happened. Mm -hmm. This is where you come from. Now I can understand. You know? Yep, yep. So it's like, how can we watch God's feet if we are the one who are dirty? He ain't dirty. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need us to wash his feet. So he's the one. God is the water. Yep. You know, so he's clean. It's blinking red. It's blinking red. Hey, man. We can edit this part out, but... Don't worry. Uh, we live, so we keep it natural here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It's like how we we supposed to like help God. Yep. We don't help a God. He right. help us. So it's like that's one thing you know I've been learning, and I hope I bet you been learning the same thing. Uh, different seasons, but you have to still you have to decide you have to pour something to somebody that yep. you've been learning, and don't keep it to yourself. Right. Yep. No. Exactly. I think there is just that element of you know what you're talking about of being vulnerable, and I think a lot of times discipleship can turn into hey, you know, we meet up once a week and we do a Bible study, but yet there's no vulnerability. You know, mm -hmm. there's no, like obviously studying the Bible is a huge part of discipleship, but there needs to be that element of really getting into what is, who am I and who, who is God and being vulnerable with, you know, this is what's really happening um, in my heart. This yeah. is what's happening in my mind. And, um, you know, for those of you who are listening and maybe want to know a little bit of discipleship, just give a quick rundown of, you know, what, with 5-2 Ministries, with Mitchell Breen Church, you know, something that we do with discipleship is really breaking it down of what did Jesus say discipleship is? Because mm -hmm. we can all have our own definition, but, yeah. you know, Jesus starts out in Luke 9.23 that says, if any man wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and pick up his cross. And that's, you know, Jesus initially calls us to this this position of being his disciples, following him. And a mm -hmm. disciple is someone who learns and follows a teacher, you know, so we have to count the cost. And do you, are you willing to deny yourself and pick up your cross? Because without that, Jesus is saying we can't be his disciple. And so, I mean, that being that first step of, you know, before getting to anything else, similar to washing the feet, mm -hmm. you know, it's a very similar concept of until you let, allow Jesus to wash your feet, until we are willing to deny ourselves and pick up our cross, Jesus is saying you can be my fan, maybe, mm -hmm. you can be my observer. But you can't follow me, you know, unless you're willing to do that. I think a lot of people go to church and they're just fans of God. Yeah, just fans, right? Right? They just go and I call it babysitting the Holy Spirit. Right. Yeah. You know, like we have to have that response, like I said. Yeah. That response is like, okay, are you letting God wash your feet now? Are you gonna let him be the one yep. who uh, controls your life and who one that leads your life? No, yep. you be the one who just like an outside expectator, like you're just sitting outside and seeing everything God is doing for all the people. But right, what right. about yourself? Yep. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Bears fan, but I'm not on the roster. And right. They're, they're not calling me for for the so offseason. You ain't, you ain't part of them. No, no, I'm not. They, I might feel like I am, but yeah. I'm not. And you know, that's the the second thing Jesus says is not only do we have to count the cost, but in order to continue to be His disciple, mm -hmm. you know, John 15, He says that we have to abide in the word and let the word abide in us yeah. and we'll bear much fruit and prove to be his disciples and so it's one thing to be a follower of christ but then we do need to be a student of the word mm -hmm. you know and we need to learn and but then we can't just be learners but we have to be doers and that's where john 13 again later on in this same chapter we're reading yeah. jesus says um to love others exactly as he's loved us mm -hmm. and so now in order to be his disciple we've got to not only follow him let him clean our feet we've got to not only abide in the word be a student mm -hmm. of the word but now we've got to be an example you yeah. know and then finally to your point that last last point that we talk about with discipleship is matthew 28 18 through 20 of making disciples jesus says go therefore and make disciples of all nations yeah. baptizing them in the name of the father son and the holy spirit and lo i'm with you always mm -hmm. and so you know there's an element of yes deny myself pick up my cross let jesus wash my feet Yes, I'm going to be a student of the Word. Yes, I'm going to love people. Mm -hmm. But then we also need to take up that mantle, take up that responsibility of not just putting a bushel over our light, but like you said, investing in other people investing. and not only being discipled, but then being willing to take the step yeah. to disciple somebody else. I was reading when I was, you know, 
looking, getting ready for this, it's like you have to have a heart of servant. Yeah. And God did. So if you come, if you come to like, yep. If you go to a place thinking that people want to serve you, you see, yeah, you have a that's the wrong mentality. You have to heart. Yep. Have a heart of servant. Yeah. Yep. And God promised, like, when we have the heart of servant, uh, we will be greatly blessed. Yeah. Uh, and knowing that if we go to a place yeah. with a mentality of helping others, and it doesn't matter what it do for us, yep. that's the love of God. That's yep. why he came. Yep. You know, like, God humbled himself yeah. to us. Why we cannot do it? Like, he's God. Yep. He don't need to do it. But understanding that when God washed their feet, and they were like, what? What are you doing? Like, yeah. We are the one. Like, So it's like, for God, it's like, he didn't make himself feel better than than them. Like, I right. never say I'm better than you guys. Yeah. You know? Even though he was. <laughs> he is. Like, yeah. You know? We all, like, we have to understand that he is, but he never said it. Which, right. You know? But his love and, and grace and mercy is so great that it's like, wow, oh, like, how I cannot be so grateful for this God, like, mm -hmm. you know, forcing me to do anything. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, absolutely. What do you think for you in allowing Jesus to wash your feet? You know, what, what's been the biggest obstacles, you know, in doing that? Obviously, we said, like, pride can get in the way, but, um, you know, I can think of two, but I'm putting you on the spot first here. But, you know, yeah, what, yeah. Good. what What do you think, you know, for you in, like, in a kind of more practical relatable way you know for people listening what's been what's been the hard part for you to allow jesus to get down in those worst areas of you know who you are i would say like even open up with jesus even though he knows me yeah i like, really say okay i got it you know you know this but I, i'm gonna stay in myself but confess it yep you know yep. the power of confession that we we're talking about is really important yeah uh, because it helped me it doesn't help jesus right you know? like, right that's what like it helped me to understand like wow yeah like i need more of god every yeah. single day yeah so we can get to a point and jane i think it's james said it like don't be too confident if you think you're standing strong yeah you know but one day you feel like great like that's it i got no more temptation yep yeah next day it's like what happened that's when you know that you need god every single day so it's like i have to know that in every area of my life i need god mm. i feel like sometimes you know like you said with depression or that you want to do it not by yeah. yourself and yep. the God, you can do the, the rest, you know. Like, yeah. But yep. I got this. Yep. But that's the hard. We got. We're gonna handle the hardest thing, you know. Like. Yes. The thing we cannot control. That's the one we're gonna handle. It. I got this, God. Like, yep. don't worry. But God is like, let me wash everything, you know. Yeah. You know, like, because if not, you don't belong to me. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that we have to humble ourselves in a way of like, God, like you, my father. Like, yeah. You know, when you're a little kid, I, I bet when you wash tongue in the shower. Mm. He cannot wash himself, right? right? You know? Yeah, especially if you got poop on him. Ooh. Yeah, you see? Yeah. So we like babies for Christ. Like, yeah. We cannot wash ourselves. We cannot wash our sins. Mm -hmm. He's the one. Mm -hmm. So having dirty feet is a, is a symbol of sin. Yeah. That's the totally. way I see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's making me think of, you know, in Stone, right? um, in the mornings, he, uh, you know, he's always got a nice old poopy diaper. Yeah. And, um, when you clean it, you know, he says, I don't like that. I don't like that. You know, and it's like, we don't like being cleaned, you know? And, but it's like, what, you want me to leave all this poop on you? You know? And it's like, I feel like that's a lot of times how God, you know, is viewing us. Yeah, it's like, so God, it's like, yeah, he's getting that poop, that sin deeply off of us. And we're saying, I don't like that. You know, I don't like that. But, you know, we don't want sin stuck on no, us forever, no, no, no. you know? And I, you know, I think for me too, one of the big, hang-ups is even just busyness you know of just like we can get so busy we don't we're not very self-reflective you know mm -hmm. we don't really evaluate what we're doing we don't evaluate why things are maybe happening or sin patterns of what's triggering us and because of that we just keep doing it we can kind of get a hard heart and so i think a big part of letting jesus wash our feet is spending time with him oh, yeah. and you know i'll just say this to those who are thinking about you know maybe going into the ministry if you're listening to this and you know, what I found in my walk in the ministry is the times where if I'm ever spending less than an hour in prayer and in study um, each day, I know I'm too busy. If I'm not at least spending an hour, mm -hmm. that's a sign that either I'm not spending my time wisely yeah. or number two, that I'm too busy. I'm too busy with things. I need to cut things out. And I found that for me, 
to sustain a healthy life and ministry, uh, my ideal is spending two to three hours, you know, in, in study prayer daily. And I just see a total, totally different shift, you know, in my life with God. And just, again, to encourage those listening who do have an aspiration to be in ministry, you know, who are we to help other people? We can't. The only way we can, the only way I can help anybody is if I'm, if I'm filled with Christ and how can I get filled with Christ? If the second I'm waking up, I'm busy or the second I'm waking up, I'm distracted by phones and video games and all this different stuff. And it's like, is phones bad all the time? No. Are video games bad all the time? No. But it's like, if I, I just know for me, if I'm not in that one to three hour range every day, um, it's just a matter of time till I'm tempted, I'm burnt out, I'm irritated, oh, yeah. and um, I end up idolizing the things of the world rather than, than so, really serving Christ. Getting to that point of one hour, two hours, 30 minutes, 40, whatever. You're saying that if you start your spirit, yeah. you're going to be vulnerable yep. easier. Yep. And I feel that's one thing I struggle because imagine you you don't eat the whole day. How you yeah. gonna feel? Like you know, I feel weak. You're yep. probably gonna just lay down. Like you know, you have no energy. You yep. know, you probably when you don't eat, you get more uh, open to like get sick. Yeah. You know, you different than that. So it's the same thing with that. If you don't, if you don't, like you're saying, it's like if you don't feed your spirit with the glory of God, like that's how to eat your first meal of the day. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. How for you, how you start the habit? You know. How was mm. it? You know, what helped you to like build that up through the years? Yeah. So when I first, um, when I was first saved, um, you know, I was playing college football, and we, you know, our workouts would start like at five forty-five, I think mm. it was, or maybe even five thirty. And yep. so we had like a ten-minute rule. So in order to be on time, you needed to be ten, ten minutes early, you know. And so, with all that being said, you know, I had to get up about four forty-five, four fifty every morning for for workouts, and so. In studying my Bible, it's like who wants to wake up before four forty to study their Bible? But I was reading this book called Disciples Are Made Not Born, and this guy said that he felt like it was arrogant not to read your Bible in the morning because he said like basically what you're saying is I'm ready to face my day without God mm. if you're not doing that in the morning. And so that convicted me. So I said, mm. you know what? I'm gonna I'm just gonna do this no matter what at all costs. And so I. Set my alarm for 4.20, and I rolled out of my bed at 4.20. I'd read my Bible 15 minutes, and I'd go to workouts. And, you know, I just started developing that habit. And then, you know, in the evening, I would study more. Um, but I always made that a priority for at least 15 minutes. And I didn't always remember. Because I was so tired. I didn't always remember what I read or learned a bunch during that time. But there was an element of God yeah. just honoring that, prioritizing I, him. I remember that. I remember 2020, the end of the fall, you know. Uh, after that, I really like. Okay, okay this is it. I'm gonna read. I yeah. Me, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give my life like fully. Yeah, uh, fully to God. Um, I went back home. I had COVID, but I was fine. Thank God. Yeah. I went back home. Every morning I woke up at six. I start reading Genesis. Hmm. I, I wasn't understanding a lot. Right. The wording was, you know, how it was. It was yeah. King James word in Spanish. Oh yeah. So, the wording was crazy. But I was reading, and man, like it was just like food. Yeah, like I feel full. My spirit feel full. You mm-hmm. know, every single morning I feel this peace, and I don't know, it was something different. And even like people say, no, like everybody, you know, have the same routine of you know spending time with God in the morning. But He did. God yeah. did it. Jesus did it. He yep. did it in the morning. Yep. He yeah. didn't. He didn't wait to like lay at nine. Like He did it in the morning. Yep. He went far away. And he had his time. Yep. So if he did that, that's telling you that he said that example, like we should do the same. Right. You know? Totally, totally. And I don't think we are more we were more busy than Jesus back then. No. Because Jesus people were following him like crazy. Like, yeah. I can't even imagine, you know. Oh, no. yep, totally. Well, and, you know, I when I first started um doing some discipleship with some guys, you know, I'd ask them, Hey, you know, did you read your Bible today? And they're like, No, I didn't or whatever, and I'd say, Man, you must be hungry. You know, because it's like, if you think about it with food, it's like, if you hadn't eaten, it's 3 p.m. It's like, hey, man, have you eaten a meal today? And you said, no. I'm like, man, you must be starving. 
And in the same way, it's like you haven't prayed today, you haven't read your word today, your spirit is is hungry. Mm -hmm. Then sometimes, you know, it'd been two or three days, and then I would, you know, even be more so. Man, are you okay? You know, you're you gonna fall over. You know, your because your spirit, if you haven't eaten for three days, just like if you haven't eaten food for three days, I mean, you'd be starting to faint. You know, yeah. and so I just think there's that element. You know, one thing I did, and maybe this was a little legalistic, but I did it for a season of every before every time I ate. Um, I would um, read or pray just for 10 minutes. So before every meal, I would just do like 10 minutes of prayer. And it just was like, I'm going to, I'm going to eat three times a day, you know? So in the morning it was a little longer, you know, maybe like 30, 40 minutes in the word and stuff. And I eat breakfast and then at lunch I get 10, 15 minutes in, I eat lunch. And then before dinner, 10, 15 minutes in dinner that I'd read before I went to bed. But there was <laughs> just an element of that, of like, you know, comparing that to our food of just being consistently filled throughout the day. Yeah with Christ I have one question this, this is for my best friend and I am putting her on the spot but it probably help her what about for those people that ain't no morning person that they ain't no morning person at all like, I'm telling right. you like they horrible in the morning like they yep. just hard to like get up or like you know it takes time or like it's hard to read in the morning because they just like you know they have a get going what what you recommend for those people who are not a morning person yeah, uh, my short answer, deny yourself, pick up your cross, <laughs> come after him. But I think in, you know, maybe a little bit more specifics, I know for me, like, for example, when I was going through, my wife would tell you this, like when I was going through a real tough season of anxiety, depression stuff, like mornings were really tough because I would I'd sleep tired. horrible. You tired. know, it's like I'd sleep two or three hours all night. And so I was finally getting some sleep in the morning. But again, I just think the question is, okay, if you say your day starts at eight o'clock in the morning and if it's literally too hard for you to get up at six to start to get time with the lord before your day starts at eight then don't start your day till nine i mean if it's really that hard and that that would be my but what about if you're at class or you know all this different right right responsibilities that you have to do yep you know so then i think the question boils down to is Again, that I think that question that guy posed was great, or that statement of, you know, is it arrogant to say, hey, I don't need to spend time with God yeah. today. I can just tackle my day on my own, you know? And so I think that's the question you've got to ask yourself is, okay, I'm not a morning person. I'm not saying you got to get up at 4.30 and do f three hours of Bible study. But, I know but you, you know, can you at least get up 30 minutes before you regularly would, spend some time in prayer, get some time in the Word? Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, I will... Put anything on yeah. it. If you do that for um, three months, if you do that for three months, you will have more energy than if you get that 30 yeah. minutes of extra sleep. Yeah. I promise. Yeah. Tell me, you know, I wake up. Depend. I wake up 3, 3 30, 4. It will work. Yeah. But you see, when I put that, I'm like, wow. Like, you see, we wake up early for the things that we know we have to go. Yes. Like, work us in the morning. Yeah. We knew we had to go because, you know, like, yeah. Of course, we're going to be mad, be mad and stuff like that. Yep. So to, yep. to me, I compare that to God. It's like, so you put in, we put in, because I do it. Yeah. Work or this person or the, the school or sports over God. Right. So like, what is priority in your life? Yep. You know? So it's yep. like, we have to really humble ourselves. And it's like, wow, like, let me start at least just, you know, 10 minutes, you know? Yeah. Pray, you know, little by little, you know? And, totally. And, and and still, it doesn't matter. Like God doesn't care like you about your work, but it's, it's your heart. Yep. You know, yeah. are, are you willing to like, you know? Yep. Get totally. through this, you know? Yeah. And I feel like we live in a comfortness uh, a lot of times. Oh, like, totally. Like, and I, it, that's another thing I'm hearing. Like God hates lazy people. Yeah. You don't like lazy people, but it's like Proverbs says, lazy. You know, let's beg a lot but get little, and those yeah. who work hard they prosper. It's like you gotta work. Yep. You know. Yep. That's yeah. why he said after, you know, he kicked out Adam and Eve. Yeah. You got to work for everything now. Yeah. You know, your food, you know, money, like, you got to work. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, like, God is there for you. But I feel like people live, live in, a, in a stage of, like, they want to see miracles and be sitting down. Yeah, totally. Well, you know, I, um, Psalm 63, he says, um, Oh, God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory, because your loving kindness is better than life. 
my lips shall praise you. And so, you know, here David's describing getting time with God and worship and the word and prayer to being in the desert, you know, thirsting to death. Mm -hmm. And he's like, man, I want water so bad. It's like, I would do anything to get some water because I'm dying, that you know? Crazy. And that's what he's comparing. We should be like in spending time with God. It's like, oh man, I have to do this. And I'm telling you, I've gone through seasons in my life where I have been kind of going through the motions, you know, just getting up and doing it. But again, when I've been at my healthiest spiritually, it's like, I'm hungry in the morning. Like I've got to, like, I have to get this time with God today or I'm like not going to make it, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's the desire and the, the conviction desire. that God wants to put in us that, yeah, it's like part of it's habit forming, it's habit. but I would say, you know, a prayer that I ask God and I would encourage you guys to ask God is just praying, Lord, like make my hunger for you greater than anything else in this world, you know? Yeah. And we, he, cause he's got to put that desire in us. I know. I know. I, it's sometimes it's like, like, but Roman says it like the spirit is willing. Yes. The flesh is not. Right. So the flesh wants you like, yeah, just stay, stay in bed, man. Yeah. You know, we yeah. tired. But the spirit is like, no, like get up. You know, like yep. we need, you know, we need this. Yep. So one verse that I like, and I was reading yesterday, one of my friends, like like a little Bible study we had, in is Psalms thirty nine, one thirty nine, verse mm. twenty three and twenty four. It says, "Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and and test me, test me. Know my anxious thoughts. Point anything." In me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life so mm. sometimes we have to like pray to god like you know god what is something that you don't like things that i like yeah and we're gonna find a lot of things that we're doing that yep you know he don't like and, and we cannot be comfort living like that like, yeah you don't like that but you know i'm just trying to see a living like this because yeah this is the way i am yeah oh, one thing you know i always say is like no i don't like it you know i don't i don't i don't feel like that you know it's, i don't feel like comfortable god was like god where you come from now? Right, you know, yep. He don't want you to get comfortable. Like yep. he wants you. Like we have to get it out. Like to say how we don't desire and pray. Like God, give me that desire to like know you more and wake up and you know having that that first thought that is you. You know, and know the phone and know mm -hmm. you know whatever. And it can be hard, but you have to be courageous and, and take the step. But like, like I have to do it. You know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No. Totally. Well, and you know, I think when you like tie all this like full circle of. We got to let Jesus wash our feet. You know, we have to be vulnerable. He has to do it in us. Mm -hmm. But then like we're, you know, talking about now, that next step of making disciples, you know, of investing in other people. But part of that is we have to put in the work, you know. And one of my favorite scriptures with that too um, is in 1 Corinthians 15. And just a quick recap for maybe people who aren't super familiar with um, Bible characters. But um, the apostle Paul was a guy named Saul who was uh, very passionate about actually persecuting the church. And, you know, he was killing Christians, stoned Stephen. He was putting Christians in prison. But then he got radically saved mm -hmm. by Jesus Christ and then became an apostle, became somebody who really helped further the kingdom of God specifically amongst the Gentiles. And in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10, um, Paul talks about, you know, why was he able to do this? And he says, and I think it... it sums up well what we've talked mm -hmm. about in washing our feet, making disciples, letting God do it, but also obeying. Um, he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was not with I. me. You know, and so right. he wow. says, this has happened by the grace of God. I am who I am. And his grace toward him wasn't useless. It wasn't in vain. So God's grace towards us isn't so that we can stay comfortable, isn't so that we can stay the same, but God gives us grace so that we can change, yeah. so that we can obey him. And without his grace, we couldn't obey him. And so because of this grace given to Paul, it's almost like a contradicting statement. He then says, because of this grace, I labored more. I worked harder than anyone else, you know, is what he's saying. And so... It's like because we've let Jesus wash our feet, now we can be the hardest worker that ever lived. You know, yep. we can be the best disciple that's ever lived. But until we let Jesus wash our feet, we can't work even if we feel like we're working. And so it's that's why this full circle is so important. Yes, Jesus has to wash your fe feet. We have to receive the grace of God. We have to humble ourselves. Yes, we have to study the Bible. Yes, we have to pray. But then there comes a point where we have to be obedient, mm -hmm. not because we have to, but because of the grace of God. 
And that's what moves us to obedience. Wow, I love what you say. I, I talked about that yesterday, about when we put an I in our life. I. Yes. I. I feel I have to change the I and put God. Yeah, and yeah. It's like, when we read the Bible, we are sometimes, we, I think we get caught up in the names, the big names. Hey, man, Moses, yeah. and Noah, and Paul, and David. Yeah. They ain't nobody. Yeah. They were nobody. Yep. The disciples. He never nobody either. God. Yeah. It was so it's so to me, learn this. God is behind everything. He's behind the scenes. Yep. No, totally. So those people that made yeah. movie, the one that write the scriptures and all that, those are the one who did the hard work. Yep. The other ones, they just being volunteers and doing, you know, the movie, but God is behind everything. Like yep. we have to understand it's not us, it's not our work. It's not so now every time that I want to do something that is about God, I don't want to do it because of me or the things right. that I know, you know? Yep. Okay, like, if I go, you know, I want, okay, God, like, I want it to be you that want to lead in me, you know? Yep. Not me trying to freestyle something. Yeah, totally. Well, you know, Hudson Taylor was uh, a guy who went and was kind of a forerunner in China, planted a bunch of hmm. churches, and um, was really the first guy to get inland China where, like, you know, communist China was to mm. advance Christianity, and... I mean, his, you have to look up his ministry, Hudson Taylor, amazing stuff. And somebody asked him one time, you know, why did God choose you? You know, Hudson Taylor, why did God choose you to go into China and do all this work? And he said, God had been looking and looking for a man um, weak enough to send to China. Right. And he finally found me, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't because he was super gifted. He was just broken and willing and understood what you're saying. It's all about God, you know, and not about not about him. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I think this is a huge topic, you know, especially oh, yeah. when it comes to anxiety, when it comes to depression, um, when it comes to addictions. And, you know, if you're in the Scotts Bluff area uh, and wanting help and discipleship, you know, reach out to us at uh, 52ministries.org. There's a lot of great local churches um, in the area. Um, or if you're, you know, out of state, still feel free to reach out mm -hmm. to us. We're online and um, can connect with you that way. And we're um, you're getting ready to just launch some youth outreach um, with some boxing and, and sports and um, music and trauma and addiction and really looking forward to that stuff so again if this ministry has been helpful for you man jump on you can partner with us at again www.52ministries.org and you can give to the way podcast yeah. you can give to the outreach you can give to um, again youth ministry to addiction to trauma ministry um, and yeah we'd appreciate that because ultimately we want to provide ministry and help yeah that Jesus can wash the feet of those who are broken that otherwise maybe wouldn't be able to afford it, you know, or wouldn't seek out for help. Or again, we don't want necessarily people to have to come to the church. We want to bring the church, yeah. you know, to the people. Amen. And so, um, you know, your guys' prayer and your guys' donation, you know, helps us, helps us do that. Amen. And so, um, man, I think this is a important episode that we would learn, you know, to allow Jesus to really get well, to the root of it. One last thing, you know, a little bit after, in that verse, in that yeah. chapter, uh, John 13, 34 and 35. So I'm, now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each, each other. Your love for one another will prove that the word, will prove the word that you are my disciple. So it's like yeah. now that, you know, we experience God's love, so it's the same way he loves us, the same way his kindness patient and mercy to us we have to show it to others yep exactly and because if we don't show that to others how are we going to expect it from god yep so yep. man i'm glad we did this thank god and yeah what area in your life you know you have dirty feet just let god get down there you know and let him wash your feet yeah and because i don't think we i don't think we wash our feet like really yeah like that no you know, like we, I don't think we go down there and scrub so them and, you know, we're, we're, the washing of the feet is the scene in our lives, you know. Yep. That's the way I see it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you guys jumping on the Sorry. way. Um, we just ask that, you know, God continues to work in your life and yeah. that we respond. And like Lauren said, aren't just hearers of the word, but we do it. Yeah. So we'll catch you next time on the next episode of The Way Podcast. Peace.